We're ready to roll. So hopefully you're here for increase your productivity with a tiling window manager. Good, so how many people are Linux users for their desktop? Oh, look at this. I've never seen a percentage like that in my life in a room. <laughs> I've done a number of Linux talks at a number of conferences and usually the percentage is way off, so Linux power, great. Um, how many Mac users? Is it everyone that's left? So probably, pr probably both, okay. So <coughs> I, I would raise my hand for both of those things as well, yeah. okay. Uh, so the slides for today, you can find them at stephencross.com if you want them. It's a PDF file. Go to presentations when you go there, and it's listed there. I updated it a couple of hours ago, so they should be relatively fresh. Um, I'm Stephen Cross. I've been working with Drupal, and it's a little awkward sitting here talking to you. I apologize, but this is going to be a demo kind of session, so I need to have access to the keyboard. Um, I've been doing Drupal since uh, Drupal 6. I'm not sure what year that actually was, maybe 12 years ago, 13 years ago. I'm currently working for the federal government as a contractor with uh, the ATF, ATF.com. Uh, and I'm a founder of the Talking Drupal podcast. Here's another query here. Has anyone ever heard of Talking Drupal, the podcast? Okay. Every time. Okay. Thank you. So over 400 episodes going back 10 years. So uh, if you want to learn about things in Drupal 7, you could start way back 10 years ago and hear about what we thought about Drupal 8 coming. Uh, but uh, it's a weekly show. I'm no longer on the show every week, uh, but I'm still involved and do a lot of behind the scenes work. So check out Talking Drupal. I am from New England, uh, particularly I live in Rhode Island. I have two cats. A little bit more about me. And maybe I wonder why I mentioned my two cats before my family. <laughs> now that I'm looking at my slides. Interesting, but um, this picture is 10 days old, 11 days old. So. Um, Ten days ago, I was a father, the father of the bride. So I'm very proud of that. I wanted to share the picture. Um, next to me is my first wife, Erica. She doesn't like that joke, but I still use it all the time. Um, of 34 years, uh, and you can see my bride is uh, right next to me there, uh, Megan, and uh, my new son-in-law. To the other side is my other daughter, who's getting married in July. So we're getting both weddings done in nine months. So I'm gonna have a tip jar here later, if anyone would like to put, uh, put a little cash in there. Um, as the father of the bride, you have that big thing to do, the father of the bride speech. Um, so it was, uh, it was fun for me to uh, take five minutes at the ceremony to talk about my daughter and her new relationship and, and the things that we shared together. And I was, as I was writing that speech, one of the things that uh, came to me was how her and I share the interest in technology. She's curious like I am, so whenever there's something new and interesting, I kind of gravitate to it, learn a little bit about it, and then move on to something else. And that's kind of what brings us here today a little bit. Um, in addition to doing Drupal stuff, um, I'm a Linux advocate. Um, as you probably have already realized, um, I do a lot of Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, those are things that once you once you get into Linux, you realize that it you can do a lot of different things with it, right? You can run computers on little devices like uh, microcontrollers on Raspberry Pis. You can almost do anything with it. So today, um, I'm going to lightly sing about the praises of Linux um, because it's a great place to do. Um, window tiling, um, but what we're going to do today is learn about tiling window managers, what the features of it are, benefits, and I'm going to demonstrate Qtile, which is a tiling window manager. So let's start with what is a window manager. So a window manager, if you look at the, the two windows that are up there right now, those red lines around it are like a frame. A window manager is a piece of software at the operating system level that's in charge of managing those windows. Where they show up, what default size they are, how they interact with each other, that's the job of a window manager. 
Today's topic is a little broader than that though. Um, it's tiling window manager. Well, there's a couple of different kinds of window managers for the purposes of our discussion today. Um, one that anyone using a Mac or even using any Linux distribution uh, is familiar with. It's the default for most operating systems, which is a floating or a stacking window manager. And in this picture, you can see here that I've got three windows open. They're stacked on top of each other. So no matter what operating system you are, when you open up a window and you can take it and move it anywhere and size it and have them overlap on top of each other, that's a floating or stacking window manager. That's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the other kind, which is a tiling window manager. A tiling window manager automatically tiles the windows into mutually non-overlapping frames. <coughs> so what that means is every time I open a window, it takes as much space as is available on the screen for you. If I open up a second window, it takes up the remaining space or creates more space for it. There is never a point that two windows are overlapping each other, ever. That's the point. And it's not necessarily ever, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's actually look at one so you can actually see what I'm talking about. I'm running a tiling window manager right now, um, and you might have maybe noticed that my bar at the top looks a little strange to units. I know it's hard to see, it's very small. It's very small for a very specific purpose, and um, we'll talk about that in a little while too, but I'm gonna go here, and this is my desktop with no window on it yet. Um, does anybody know what that picture is? Duh. Is that? No, no answer. So that's a Van Gogh. Starry night at the road, I think. The, the river there, or the city. Anyway, so I'm gonna open a terminal with a super key and return key. You can see that I just opened a terminal, it takes up the entire space. I'm gonna open up a second terminal. It splits the screen. I'm gonna open up a third one, and a fourth one, and a fifth one. That, right there, is the tiling window manager. Thank you for coming. No. <laughs> um, so it gives you a sense of what it is. You can see that there's, they're not overlapping. I'm gonna go ahead and I can close them. They'll take up different space. We're going to go into what all the features are here and how it works in a few minutes. Jump back to my slides. So when you think about your desktop, when you're looking at your computer screen, um, when you're in Windows or Mac, those two operating systems are proprietary closed software. And by default, and the only thing you can actually do with them right now is you can have the floating and stacking windows like we talked about earlier. And they do have some configuration options in those operating systems, like snapping windows to the edge. And so you can open up, you can change some settings in a Mac and, or install a different piece of software and have it take up full space and do that kind of thing with it. The kind of problem with um, Windows and Mac, the way they approach this, is that it's a one size fits all. So, Every single computer user, regardless of what their skill level is, whether they're a newbie or they're very experienced, someone who casually looks at a computer once a day to check their email, versus someone who's on their computer all day long doing work with lots of windows open, they have the exact same desktop environment. It works exactly the same for everybody. And if you just think about that for a second, you probably think that's probably not the most efficient way for some people to work in that environment. So you can imagine that the business guy sitting doing spreadsheets all day, my 82-year-old mother checking her AOL email and looking up recipes every day, and the programmer, they all have the same interface to the computer in those environments. That's probably not very efficient. The needs of this guy here are very different than the business user well, my 82-year-old mom. So let's talk about the developer for one second. Like what's in, in we'll, we'll focus this on Drupal. It's a, it's a Drupal conference. So the Drupal developer, these are the software apps that in Windows he probably has running during the day all day. He's got an IDE open, probably a couple of 
windows of that. He's got a number of terminals open so he can get access to servers, compile code. He's usually got some team communication, Slack. He's got browser with some people, 50, 60, 70 tabs open at one time. There's a ticketing system he's running. There's probably a community chat like Discord that he's connected to and other software on his machine. He's taking his own notes and he might be running GIMP or running some visual tools. There's a lot of stuff going on. So he's multitasking, usually at a very high level, switching between apps and windows constantly. He is on the keyboard more than maybe the average user. Or maybe what Windows or Mac calls their typical and average user. His needs are very, very different. <clears throat> and we're gonna look at how tiling window managers are really great for those kinds of people. And it's generally the people in this room right now. So I'm gonna throw a few more terms at you. Um, and there's a number of people here who are already using Linux, so they're probably familiar with the term desktop environment. I'll abbreviate it as DE moving forward. So a desktop environment is the whole thing. Like if you install Ubuntu or you install Mac OS, it's the screen that you get and it includes a window manager that we already talked about what the job of that window manager is. Plus it includes the icons, the windows, the toolbars, the folders, the widgets, the, so the default software that gets installed when you install the operating system, so it'd be a file browser, system preferences, web browsers, email programs, all of those software applications, when you install a desktop environment, all of that stuff comes with it. So if I were to look at a Mac desktop right now, so, and if this is my uh, desktop environment, you see all the stuff here, I've got some widgets, I've got my applications on the left, I've got my widgets, my icons, I've got a desktop, I've got an image in the background. All that is part of the desktop environment. Linux, the way Linux is built, it's component based and it's open source. And this is very, at a high level, the anatomy of how Linux is set up. You've got the hardware at the bottom, so at the bottom of this stack here is your physical computer with your disk drives and your mouse and your keyboard. Above that is the Linux kernel. That's the piece of software that interfaces with all the hardware. That's all it does, it interfaces with hardware. It includes the device drivers and all that kind of stuff you need to make the hardware work. On top of that level, from a UI and window management perspective, we have something called a display server. There's the two popular ones that are out there is X Server and Wayland. These, this is the software that's interfacing with the kernel, and the kernel's interfacing with the hardware. On top of that level you see here, we have this thing that I've just described as the desktop environment that includes all of that stuff that you see and use when you install the operating system. To the right here is a thing called the window manager. Every desktop environment includes a window manager but a window manager can also sit on its own. So the user interfaces with the desktop environment, which has a Windows manager, which goes to the display server, the kernel, etc. This is the software stack. We're not gonna go any deeper than that, but I'm gonna show you why this is important in a minute. When you're working with Mac and Windows, a desktop environment, we'll call it as well. They don't use those terms per se. The anatomy of that is a user is, installs a software, but it's a black box. We already know it's proprietary. You don't know really what's inside of there. You can't change the things inside of there. What you get is what you get. They probably have it broken up in a very similar way, that they've got a Windows manager, and they've got a desktop environment, and they have these different kernels and these, these modules that they've put together, but it's in a black box that you as a user don't have access to. So you install Windows or Mac, and it connects to your hardware, and that's all you can do. So your desktop environment options for a Mac are, you get the Mac desktop environment. That's what you get. Windows, the same thing. Windows desktop environment. With Linux, you have options. So GNOME, XFC, Mate, Unity, Cinnamon. These are all different desktop environments 
that you can use when you install Linux. And those desktop environments are created for different needs that people have. So there's some desktop environments that are for a beginner or a very Windows-like. So when you install Linux, it looks very similar to how Windows works. There's another one that looks very similar to how a Mac works. So when you transition from Mac to Linux, you could start with that desktop environment and you can get on Linux very quickly because it's very familiar to you. So there's, and then, then there's desktop environments that are designed for very low-end hardware. Like I have a 12-year-old computer, doesn't have a lot of memory, doesn't have a great CPU, so I want a desktop environment that is very lightweight. There's an option for that. So Linux, you have options in your desktop environments. What we're talking about today, but this is the same diagram we had earlier, is we're going to talk about tiling window manager as a component by itself and getting rid of the desktop environment. So I can actually install Linux on a machine. I could actually install a server version of Linux, which has no UI whatsoever, has no email program, has no nothing. I install that version of Linux, then I install a window manager, and I set up everything myself. I decide all of the applications that I want on there. I decide how they work. I decide how it looks. That's what a tiling window manager is. In a little bit, we'll get to some of the um, some of the uh, benefits of doing that, the pros and the cons later on. So, a um, few minutes ago, we looked at the desktop environment options per operating system. Now, the tiling window manager options: Mac, none; Windows, none; Linux. There's a number of them. I3, Qtile, Awesome, Xmonad. These are window managers, separate applications that you can install on top of the operating system to get control of the windows. Now, there's also ways that you can take window tiling features like what we saw a few minutes ago when I opened it up and the windows were moving in the right places. You can actually install that stuff on uh, Windows and a Mac and we're going to look at some of those solutions later. But the difference is those pieces are plugged in on top of the desktop environment. They're not sitting by themselves. And we're going to look at that at the end of this presentation. So let's dig a little bit more into Tiling Window Managers. There's two types of them, two basic flavors. One is a dynamic, the other one is manual. A dynamic tiling window manager has an algorithm built into it that when you open a window, it determines where the window goes and how it gets sized. The manual one is flavors, are that you decide in a configuration ahead of time where you want a particular kind of window to open up and how big it should be. But in both cases, they both follow the same guidelines as there's no desktop space at all, it takes up maximum space. Some of the characteristics of a tiling window manager is you start with an empty slate. Other than it having some default configuration for you, and, and um, most of them do, not, maybe not all of them, when you install it, you can get some default settings so you can use it right away. But they generally don't come with anything. So once you install the tiling window manager, you don't have anything else on your computer. You don't have a file manager to like GUI browse files. You don't have a way to turn your volume up and down on your computer. You don't have anything. It's bare bones. All it's doing is controlling those windows, right? Where they open up and how they do. You don't know software. So you then define what software you want to install, how many, um, you define the software that you install, Another characteristic here is uh, tiling window managers have very, very strong support for multiple displays. So if you're that kind of person like that developer was in that picture earlier who has multiple displays and you like that, tiling window managers make those multiple displays really work well. Far better than what you have in the other operating systems. Um, tiling window managers are keyboard focused. Um, they do support a mouse a bit, you'll see. Uh, some tiling window managers 
provide more mouth support than others, like the ability to drag a window from one place to another. The one we're gonna look at doesn't support that out of the box. And a tiling window manager is function over beauty. So if you're the person who likes to admire your desktop, you're not gonna do that here. The only way I can admire my desktop is when I switch to this workspace and I see that picture. That's pretty much it. Because the second I open a window, I can't see it anymore. Um, so it's really, it's really focused on function and performance over how well something looks. You're not gonna have, by default, you wouldn't have drop shadows on things. You notice there's no widgets and no spaces for widgets. There's no dock. There's no dock at the bottom of the screen. There's no need for a dock. And I'm gonna show you those things now. And the other thing is, they, could, they come with a default configuration, but they're basically controlled by a config file. So when you install a tiling window manager, you, you need to get comfortable very quickly in customizing it via some, config, some configuration. So enough talking about them, let's look at this one. This is Qtile that I'm running here. Um, Qtile um, is Python based. So what we're seeing here is being run on Python. So the configuration, if you're familiar with Python code, you look at this config file, we're gonna look at it in a minute here. Um, it's Python code, and you can very quickly see what's happening with it. So let's move on to a demo. So I'm running, I've already been demoing this, so we're already sitting in the in Qtile. And let's start by looking at the status bar. So across the top, I don't know how good you guys can see this. It's small. But across the top is this thing called the status bar. I could have placed it at the bottom or the top. I'm not sure if it supports left or right. I don't think so. Um, I chose a top. Um, and everything that's in this status bar is because I put it there. And the things that are in this status bar right now on the left-hand side, and we're gonna dig into all these a little bit, this is the layout that I'm running right now. I'm running a layout called column layout. I'm gonna show you a few others in a few minutes. These numbers here, one through nine, are my workspaces. We're gonna cover those in a minute. I've got what window title I have, and off to the right here, and again, function over beauty. <laughs> I've, got, um, I've got an icon showing that my um, Synology Drive client has started and running. I've got the date and the day, and I've got the time. And I always wanna be able to see what the time is, so I made it background green color because it's easy for my eyes to find it. Then I've got this horrible red on black, these three letters here. Uh, this is the network that I'm currently connected to, which is my wireless device, the volume of my computer volume, and my battery charge. I actually don't care about anything else on my computer. Those are the only things I put up there. So as you can see right away, I have no distractions here. I don't have weather. I could put weather here, but I don't care about that. I do have notifications that could pop up here from any of my apps. And they, those messages might pop up here in the middle. If I got uh, a Slack message or something, it would show up here. That's a status bar. So what I'm gonna do here, let's actually open up the config file and just take a quick peek at this. And I'm not here to train you on Qtile, but I want you to just see the difference, the connection between what you see in the window manager and what's in the config file. So I'm gonna jump over here and I'm gonna open VS Code. So I already had this open last to my config file. So this is a config.py, it's a Python file. And the definition of my status bar is in this config file and it's right here. So there's the wallpaper that you see, the Van Gogh. Uh, it's gonna fill up the screen, and these are the status bar things that you see at the top. So for example, here's the battery widget. We're gonna talk a little bit more widgets in a few minutes. Here's the uh, text box with B. So that's the background of red, so I can know that that's the battery. Um, that's the battery setting. So this is what a config looks like for my status bar. Jump back to here. What did I miss saying? Um, we're going to talk about, uh, I think we're talking about key bindings next. Okay. Let me jump to key bindings. So, 
the tiling window manager is completely keyboard focused. The idea is that you wouldn't ever have to pick up your mouse unless you wanted to inside your inside your apps or so, something. And um, so the combinations are generally like this. It's super key plus a shift or a control and another key will do something. Um, and what I'm gonna do for a little bit here while we're moving through is I'm gonna start another app so you can see the key bindings as I go through them. So I'm gonna run this thing called screen key. It's another app here and it's now running. So when I type something in, you'll see which key I'm pushing. Uh, so for example, let me jump back to our sample and I'm using my mouse right now so I could click on these up top. It's sort of user friendly like that. Um, but I could also jump with super key and the number of the workspace. So right now I went to super key two, now I'm in workspace two. So I can see my active window right now, if I started typing, is the one with the red box around it. I can do a super key space and switch between my windows. So if I've got a lot of windows, I can quickly jump between them if I need to. I can resize my windows. By default, the layout that I have basically is gonna create one big window on the left, and then as I open more, it's gonna create more on the right. Um, so I can make these bigger or smaller with a super key H to go that way, L to go this way. So I can fine tune, as I'm working with my windows, I can fine tune the sizing if, if I want. And I haven't touched my mouse, no mouse touching here, right? And jump back to key bindings. Um, if I want to take a window and, let me jump back here again, I want to take VS code and it's currently sitting in workspace three. You can see the three with a little box around it up top. Um, I want to move that to workspace four. So I just, instead of to switch to workspace four, I use super four. To move the current window to that workspace, I add the shift to it. So I'm gonna take this window and jump it to four. Now that's in workspace four. If I jump back to workspace three, there's nothing in there. What else do I want to tell you about key bindings? The key bindings, if I go back to four, are all defined again in this configuration file. So if I look here, these are all my key bindings that I can use. I can take windows and move them around the screen, move them from the left to the right, all through the keys, I'm bigger, smaller. All of that stuff is defined here. And I can also make my own key bindings to do my own things. For example, um, my volume on my computer is controlled with this. These are, um, these are commands that basically tie into the key that's volume mute volume up and volume down. So I've key bound those to run Linux commands. And if you know about Linux, you know that anything you can do from the UI, you can do from the command line. That's basically what it is. It's basically the UI is running commands behind the scenes. So anything you can do in Linux, you can make take a key binding and make that key binding work. A key binding that I have here as well is I do a super shift F and it opens up a file manager. And it follows the rule. It splits the screen, moves it to the right. If I open up now a command line, it's gonna split that right side and put another one in there. Let's move on to workspaces. I've already talked about these a little bit. This is the superpower of tile window managers. Workspaces is the reason why I work in this environment completely now and have for a couple of years. So Windows and Mac both have the concept of workspaces. You can create a separate workspace. It's a virtual desktop. Um, tile windling, tiling window managers give you a lot more control over those workspaces. And part of the superpower is you can have your, if you have multiple displays, you can configure your workspaces to work different on each display, which is very difficult in those other environments. So for example, if I have workspace one, I have two screens. Workspace one on screen A could have three different windows than workspace one on screen two. 
doesn't work that way in those other operating systems. So it's independent per display. Um, so if I jump back to the configuration now, and you can see I've been popping through these things pretty quickly. You just jump to them with your keys. Yeah, I never pick up the mouse to move, move around my computer at all. Um, so let me go back to here. And if I just look in the config file quick, down here, these are my workspaces. So I have three, I connect this laptop with two external monitors at some times. So that would be three displays, the one on a laptop and then two others. And I, oh, hold off on that comment. So this is basically the definition of that screen. Here's the wallpaper, we kind of talked about this already. This is the status bar that shows up here. Here's my second screen. When I'm on, when I connect an external monitor to, the, to this, I actually have a separate wallpaper, so I can visually see which one is which. And I have a third one, and I can have different widgets or different status bars based on which screen I'm in. So if I'm on the second screen, I may not want to see everything in the status bar that I see on the first screen. Those are workspaces, incredibly powerful. Moving on to layouts. The other thing you get with Tiling Window Managers, and a point I want to make is that I'm, ta I'm showing you Qtile. A lot of the other window managers work the same. The concepts are the same. They might have slightly different features. They might have different terminology for some of these things, but they all generally work the same way. And the configuration files for them are generally completely different. So layouts, um, Qtile comes with like 15 or 20 default layouts, different ways that you can predefine how a screen should work. So a couple of them here are, one of them is called Monad Tall, which is generally what we're using here with columns, except that we're split 50-50 down the middle. They've got a three column Monad, um, which would move your windows into three columns. I've got this shortcut up here on the left hand side that allows me to switch my um, layout on any workspace that I want to. So you're not tied to workspace. You can flip them whenever you want to and move them around. So if I, uh, let me go back to here and show you. So right now, so one of the most common layouts I use or switch to is if I have multiple windows open, I use this in a browser based workspace a lot. If I'm got a split screen, but I want to actually see everything in one window at one time, I just switch to the full the uh, full layout. So if you notice, it's called max here. I basically maxed the current the current uh, window that I'm on, and then I can just go back to the way I was before. That's a very common thing that I do. The other things here, it's some of these other window managers. Let me see what else I've got here. I've got uh, Monad wide. I've got uh, all columns. I've, there's my max again. Monad Tall, some of these things look better if you create multiple uh, windows, you can see them. But there are a bunch of them. I'm going to come, come back in here for a second and show you by default. These are some of the ones that I've played with. I've got them all disabled because I generally don't use them, so I keep them turned off. Um, I only turn these on today for this demonstration, uh, but I generally just use the max and the columns all the time. These can get very complicated. Uh, they do some crazy stuff in some of these uh, layouts, and a lot of people have built their own layouts, open sourced them, put them online so you can download more layouts. I generally fall into the category of keeping it simple. Widgets. Widgets are these graphical items that show up in this bar here. There are a bunch of widgets. Um, we've already kind of looked at them quickly, but I'll just go back again. Um, Qtile comes with maybe 30 widgets that are built in automatically. People write their own widgets. You can download additional libraries to add additional widgets. Um, for example, uh, this widget displays the clock. This widget is text for the N. Um, this is the widget here that tells me what my network interface card is set to. Um, so you basically style up your status bar based on these widgets. Last thing here that I'm going to really, no, two more things I'm going to touch on, on the features and things you customize in the applications, is applications. So, I mentioned earlier, if you install a window manager, you basically don't have any software installed. So, 
for me, when I set this up, um, I'm thinking about what are the things I need to, to work every day? Well, I need a browser, so I install a browser. I need an application launcher. If you've noticed, you've probably seen me do this a couple of times, I have Command-Shift-R brings up this thing that basically gives me access to every application that I've installed. In the Mac, there's something called Alfred that's similar to this. This is actually Rofi. I don't know if anyone's ever used that in Linux, but you can, you can use it in Linux. It's just an application launcher. So you start to type in what you want. If I want to run Flameshot app. If I want to start it, I just start to type it, comes up, and then it's going to install it. It's running. So for me, having like an application bar where the icons come up and I search for the icons and click on them is like insane. All I do is hit super shift R, start to type the app in, hit enter, and it's running. Um, I already showed you that I have a file manager and I built, I've installed applications to do all kinds of things that I need to do on a daily basis. Um, to control, like if you think, when you install a desktop environment, there's things that you get that you won't get with a tiling window manager unless you think about it. Like one is, how do I set my displays? Like I want, you know, I plug in the monitor, but I want to change the resolution and stuff. So I just call, I just call a, uh, this is a mirrored, it, mirrored desktop right now, but I'm currently connected to two displays. This is the tool. It doesn't look as pretty as the one that comes with the desktop environment or comes with Windows or Mac, but it actually does the same thing. I could take this display and set the resolution on it. It does all the same stuff, it's just not as pretty. But it's the one that, it's a really basic Linux tool. It comes with a lot of distributions already installed. I just call it. Let me shut this because I don't want to mess anything up. Uh, I've already mentioned Wi-Fi access, my volume control. So you have to make choices about the applications that you want when you install this. The last couple of things I have here, I don't know if you've noticed, the windows don't have any closes on them. And you don't minimize them. There's no minimizing a window. The window is either open or it's not. The application is either open or it's not. If I open up a browser, and I'll do, uh, there's one open now, <laughs> but if I open up an email client, it's either open or it's closed. It's not meant, the concept of minimize doesn't exist. Because when it's open, it takes up space and you put it somewhere. And if you want to get to it, you just jump back to that workspace and see it. So the, my mindset for this, when I start my day or I put up my computer, I always go to tap, I go to workspace one and that's where I just open up my, my uh, Firefox. My workspace two is reserved for a couple of other browsers. That's one and two. Workspace three always has my visual, uh, my Visual Studio sitting in there. My number eight has Slack. My number nine has Obsidian. So whenever I want to get to those apps, I just hit the command key. I'm not looking for them. I'm not minimizing them. I'm not hunting through a command tab key to find the window that's been minimized. It's just sitting in that workspace waiting for me to get there. And it's in the same state that I left it. So these are two things that you have to get used to. There's no close. How do I close the window? Well, you use super key W. And I don't want to do that. I just closed the presentation. That was stupid. <laughs> so I just opened it back up. So I want to go, I'm on my workspace one. I want to open Firefox because that's where it was. Firefox It's just an F because it's the first one that comes up. I got to run back to my presentation and fire it off again. Jump back to one, there it is. Okay. So we're just going to get caught up in the slides. So there's not a concept of minimizing. It's either open or closed. And to close a window, you do a command W, a super key W. The last kind of thing I want to just point out in the configuration file is I did mention that I had a I had a Synology Drive client running, so like a Dropbox sync or something like that. That's just another thing that I put in my config file. There's a startup section that I say, it's at the top here somewhere, when you start up, please go run this shell file. This shell file kicks off my Synology client. So my desktop that I use every day is very thin running. There's not a lot of stuff happening here. Go back to here. Okay, so the title of this presentation was about productivity. How does this help you productivity? I don't know if you've seen 
as you're watching this, I don't know if people have ever seen a tiling window manager before, but when you maximize the real estate space across multiple displays, you, as a person, are never hunting for things. One of the frustrations I have when I team work with my teammates, and I'm glad none of them are here, so I can say that right now. Lindsay, you can't repeat this. I, I get frustrated because I watch them working on their Macs, and they're constantly looking for stuff, and moving windows around, and spending 15 seconds every time switching a window, and moving it, and moving it, and it just drives me nuts. They're spending more time on their mouse, futzing with the windows. That gets removed. You stay on your keyboard. If you learn to stay on your keyboard and go to the mouse only when you absolutely need to or want to, um, you're gonna be way more productive. It's very quick to jump around. You've seen me do it just now. We jump between these things pretty quickly. And it's very lightweight. So your system runs faster because it's not loading all the crap that the desktop environment installs by default that you don't necessarily need. You've picked the things that you want to run, and if you need them, you install them and you run them. If you don't want them, you don't. So your computer's always running, running very fast. How did I transition to a tiling window manager? I switched to Linux about seven years ago. Was a heavy Mac user. Um, everything Mac in the house for years and years, 15 years. Uh, then I installed Linux quickly fell in love with it, um, went from Ubuntu to Arch Linux, then I've sort of landed on Pop, U, Pop OS, which is another distribution a few years ago, and I've recently started to switch over to just Debian. So I try things, like I mentioned in the beginning, I, I, I explore new technology. And when I was using Pop OS, they introduced something a few years ago with the tiling window features. The stuff that I was just demonstrating where you open something and it moves automatically to certain places and you can use your keyboard to switch between windows and switch between workspaces, they built that into their desktop environment. So they layered it on top of what you already had with all that other stuff. I turned that thing on and it changed the way I used my computer completely. Within days, my mind was blown. I'm like, holy cow, I don't have to futz with my windows. I'm, I'm just using keystrokes to jump everywhere. And I went from that transition into looking at these standalone window managers. And I used one, the one called Awesome for a while. And now for probably a year and a half, I've been using Qtile. So there are two approaches to getting these tiling tiling features. The first one is what we looked at today, which is rip out the desktop environment completely and install this tiling window manager, and then you've got the headache of building everything up yourself. That's one approach. The other approach, which is kind of what I did, I got introduced through it through Pop! OS, is they add window tiling features on top of your desktop environment. Luckily in Linux, can't do this in those other two operating systems already, but Linux actually allows you to, most of the distributions, allow you to pick, install multiple desktop environments on your machine, and then when you log in, you pick which one you want to run. So right now on this computer, I have Pop! OS running, and I have Qtile. When I come to my login screen, just like you see here in this screenshot, there's a little icon at the bottom that I can pick which one I want to load when I start up Linux. So I can still run Pop! OS with all the stuff that Pop! OS has, which I very rarely do anymore. I come in always in, in Qtile, but you have the ability to run both. So I've mentioned Pop! OS a couple of times. Their software that they provide the tiling with is called Pop! Shell. It's open source. You can install it on other distributions. So if you're interested in checking out tiling-like features without going all head in like I did, or what we looked at today, you can go and check out Pop! OS. They have the same things for Windows and Mac, and they work pretty well. This first one is for Mac, it's, and it's uh, Yabai, Yabai? I think. I'm not sure how you actually say this. I, mean, I can't remember. Has anyone used this? Seen this before? This is an open source project. 
It layers into Mac OS, and it does all the same things that we saw happen today with moving the windows around with keystrokes. It's a great way to get started in this environment. The same thing for Windows. Comoribi, 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 I think this is. It's very similar, open source project. You kind of install it. Both of these, when you install them, you're now in a position where you have to like approve like some third party software getting installed on your machine. I watch the videos to install these. They look very straightforward. They're very, very active communities that are maintaining them. And you can get the same kind of features in this application as well. So some of the pros for Tally Window Managers. We've already gone through the keyboard focus, customizable, lightweight performance. The cons if you go down this route. If you don't like configuration files and you don't like tinkering with stuff, going the, the full hog tile winding manager is not for you. There's a lot of work to set it up front. But once you get into this world, there is no turning back. You'll see your performance include, uh, increase. Last thing I want to mention before we leave, New England Drupal Camp is a conference like this, significantly smaller. Same kind of content. It's on November 17th and 18th in Providence. Um, we also have a higher education summit um, on the Friday and training. Saturday we have with sessions. If you're in the New England area, you should be going to this. Um, if you're not, it's probably too late to make plans to go, but maybe see you next year. And uh, there's some resources here. These links all are clickable in the PDFs. I know we're out of time. Does anyone have any questions? And I can hang around if you do. Is anyone going to try it? <laughs> I'm so glad there's a Windows option. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I like Google too, but it's, I just can use Windows now. So. Yeah, that's the thing. Go to, uh, go to YouTube, look up Tiling Window Manager, Windows, or Mac, or Linux, and you'll see lots of resources. Thank you for your attention.